So hello everybody and welcome to Producing Ukrainian Plays Internationally. This discussion is uh, part of our staging of a double bill of Ukrainian plays at the Fimbra Theatre in London, um, which is on until the 3rd of September 2022. Um, I'm director of one of the plays, my name is Svetlana Dimitrovich, we're joined by the cast um, and uh, also our speaker, John Friedman, who has produced some of the international readings. The cast members on with us today are Amanda Ryan, Alan Cox, Kristen Millwood, and I believe E.C. Knowles as well. So hello to everybody. And Margaret Cox has joined us too, who has been producing the plays. And um, we are um, the Ukrainian Voices in London um, crew. So John, hello. Thank you for joining us from, I believe, Greece or wherever Greece, you are. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes, would yes. you give us a little bit of an introduction about what you've done for Ukrainian playwrights and just generally in this space? Maybe if we concentrate since February this year, um, just give us an overview. Yeah, it's uh, I can do that, but I, I, I have to start. I, I cannot possibly start uh, uh, any earlier than about two years ago when a Belarusian playwright, Andrei Kurechik, uh, sent me one of his plays and said, I'd like you to help me to get this read around the world. It was about the revolution in Minsk. Uh, I translated the play very quickly. We had over 200, well, not very quickly. In six to eight months, we had over 200 readings in 32 countries or something like that. And uh, that was a huge, unexpected, spontaneous project that happened entirely on its own. <laughs> uh, you know, I just hung on for dear life. And then when the war began, okay, now I can get to February 24th, the war began and uh, the, the Belarus project was slowing down. You know, people weren't as interested, weren't as many people interested in doing stuff. And uh, one of my best uh, partners in Hong Kong, William Wong, sent me a, an urgent email and he says, John, what are we going to do? And I, I wrote back, indeed, William, what are we going to do? Uh, Give me a few minutes. And I did what I did two years ago. I started sending out feelers to people. And as happened two years ago, instantly every single person I reached out to said, we want to do this. And uh, so to make a long story short, now in the six months of the war, we have over well over 200 readings. Uh, you know, I, 25 countries, it's, 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 it's huge. Uh, we've had tremendous uh, support in Finland, mm -hmm. in, in Germany, mm -hmm. UK, the US, um, Romania. Romania is fabulous. Uh, Romania is like right there, you know, they're right on the, the, the southern sure. border. Actually, Ukraine is the yeah, border. Yeah, of course. And so they, uh, so the Romanians are, are very interested and very helpful. And uh, so this keeps going. I mean, it, it keeps going. I got two more letters from people today saying we're joining you. Uh, uh, during the height of the project, which was March to, to, to the end of May, uh, I was getting new, you know, 10 to 15 new theaters a week joining us. Uh, Today, as I said, we had two join us today. I haven't had any for a couple of days. I don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, once the fall, you know, school starts, theater seasons get going, uh, I have a feeling it's going to pick up again. And it needs to pick up again. That's a very important point. It needs to pick up again because uh, the situation in Ukraine is not going anywhere. I mean, even if this were to be solved in a military fashion in the next month, let's say that, ain't going to happen, but let's say that. Uh, our need to support the Ukraine, the Ukrainians, the Ukrainian writers, the Ukrainian uh, culture and, and society is going to go on for a very long time. So uh, this is this this project of worldwide Ukrainian play readings is uh, is extremely important. It's helping a lot of people. And um, it's uh, uh, I'm looking forward to it to continue growing. I'm very grateful to what Finborough that has done. The production that you guys did here of these two plays is the first full productions that we've had. Everything else that we've had have been readings or or festivals or or events or happenings. 
you know, uh, that kind of thing. You guys are the first people that have taken plays and actually produced them and performed them for a run. And uh, obviously you did it incredibly well. Um, and so uh, we're very grateful to you for breaking that barrier. And I want to see more of that. I, I you know, I want to see, I want to see more things, not just one off shots where people come out, see the stuff, are impressed, uh, amazed, and then they go home and go back to their business. I want to, I want to see, you know, things running in London, in New York, in, in, uh, I'd love to get Italy. Anybody know Italy? I can't get Italy. <laughs> um, in Rome, you know, wherever. Yeah. Um, I would love to see that happen. Like way, the way you guys are doing it in London. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you, John. I want to bring in actually Anna Pokorska, who's our assistant producer, who's also on with us uh, now. Anna, why did you want to work with us? Uh, you've just come back from Poland too. Maybe you want to tell us a bit about that experience as well. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, well, well, first of all, I'm Ukrainian. Uh, I was born Ukrainian and uh, I was living there in Odessa in my hometown until the age of 27 or 28, I don't remember. Then I've moved to Moscow, which sounds a bit of a joke <laughs> in current circumstances. But yeah. uh, And uh, two years ago, I've moved to London. So when the war broke out, I was evidently here. And mm -hmm. I still have a part of my family in Odessa. They are all male. And for obvious reasons, they can't leave the country. And since the since early hours of the war, I was just digging in everything uh, and anything, all the initiatives. Uh, I was just happy to help because I thought that it was my duty to help. Okay. And um, as I belong to the film industry, uh, when Margaret or Svetlana, I don't even remember who that was, um, sent me an invitation uh, and we started discussing it that there was an instant answer in my head. Like, yes, of course, I'm... I'm going to be, um, as long as I'm helpful and I can be of any help, I will help. So, Which you have been, brilliantly so. Um, and you've just been in Poland volunteering, which isn't anything to do with our plays, but just give us a flavor of that. Well, again, um, on 21st, uh, 24th and probably during the very first week of the war, we were all in high hopes and we thought that now the world will awake and Russians will awake and the war will be over. Uh, but then very soon we kind of started to understand that it won't happen or it won't happen so quickly. And uh, I had this idea passing in my hand, in my head, thinking, what can I do? Like, really, what can I do? How can I be hands on? Yeah. And I was thinking of going to a camp. But back then mm -hmm. I didn't have any opportunity to do that because I had my day to day responsibilities, meaning work. Uh, and uh, then I started planning around it and I planned uh, a week in Poland somewhere in August. So I got in touch with one of their organizations, which are plenty. So I traveled to the closest uh, um, town, uh, the closest to the Ukrainian border. It's uh, Przemysl. And I went there and I was just, you know, providing help um, in every way I could. So there were like three um three possibilities of providing help help you can go to the train station just navigating people around the town and just answering their common questions uh you can go to the volunteering camp which was sadly closed at the time when i was there but we were arranging stuff and preparing for people to come in again mm -hmm. and uh, there was uh, like a small tent literally a tent close to the ukrainian border where people who are literally broke uh, staying overnight so okay. it's, a, it's a fully heartbreaking experience and uh, I honestly when I was going yeah. there I was thinking how can I be of a help uh, probably people can get around and when I arrived there I understood I understood very quickly that there are so many lost and devastated people that even mm -hmm. now very simple questions like where do I get food where do I get a sim card how do I of get course. to I don't know Hanover really yeah. to them and when you are helping them with their basic needs that really means the world to them and uh, i'm really really grateful to my friends and colleagues and everyone who answered my kind of an open call on the facebook page uh when uh, i said i'm gonna be going there if you want to help if you want to donate like small amounts of money please do so being there in poland when i 
realize that so many people are, um, are, are like, I don't know, moneyless, penniless. I just bought them tickets. And there are a lot of people who are traveling to these camps and they are helping in every way they can. So that's, yeah. that's the experience. Thank you so much, Anna. That's really interesting for, I think, our audiences to hear because we feel slightly as if we're sitting in, in London, some of us, and we don't, we feel a little bit helpless. That's where this double bill, I think, spurred from, wanting to do something and wanting to do it in the language of the theatre, which is what we know best. I'd like to turn now to some of the cast. Um, can I ask, uh, I suppose as a starting point, um, because the runs are finishing on Saturday, can I go to Alan, for instance, and say, how will you get on without Sasha from Take the Rubbish Out, Sasha? What will it be like to finish this production now? Um, it's, it, it, it'll be sad because it feels like um, a feeling of the, the community and a conversation between the, the, the London-based performers and the, the people who travel into London to make theatre work. And the kind of the, the Ukrainian diaspora is beginning to, to connect up and just as we have a handful of performances left. Um, and it's just been, just, just personally for me, a, a kind of a, an opportunity to deepen my relationship to these events that are regulated into the news on sort of page nine and page 13 from, from where we sit in this kind of privileged bubble in, in England. Um, so uh, my, my hope is just that it's alive in me, my sense of the, the, the situation and the kind of the refugee situation in particular coming out of Ukraine is, is, is I'm awake to it. And, and it's, it's, it's part of my, my, my life life and also a continuing part of my cultural life, I would say. And how did you find playing Sasha without giving too much away? Well, it's, it, it, it's <laughs> interesting to play a non-heroic soldier during a time of war um, and just to, to lend one's presence to that, even though it's a, it is a kind of non-corporal presence in the play. Um, and there's a whole kind of question about which, which you know, is is in the play about what manhood is, with respect to the ongoing life of the female population, in particular, in Ukraine. Um, and so I, yeah, no, I, I will be be sorry to let him go as he's been passing through me. Yes, uh, it's a it's a funny piece. It's a it's a co comic and tragic and also magic piece. So I'll be sad to see it go too. Um, but uh, but thank you for summing it up so well in terms of the male character. I think if we can now turn to Amanda. Amanda, you play the mother and the wife of Sasha, the non heroic soldier, as Alan has beautifully described him. Um, what's it been like for you playing Katya? Um, and I was talking to somebody the other day about, uh, you know, one of the reasons that I did want to do the play was certainly what you have said about uh, feeling that it was at least a very small way, maybe, to contribute to raising a Ukrainian voice in a time when I am so far removed from it. Um, and, and I think you know, I felt a responsibility for that too, because I wanted, um, I wanted, <laughs> because like you said, the privileged position, position that we're in, I wanted to make sure that I did her proud. Um, and it was quite hard to do that. It's quite hard to put yourself into such a situation unless you really are experiencing it and you really are, like Anna was saying, being there and experiencing what it is like. Um, so I just had to try and find the, the ways in which I could relate to her and just the humanity of the character and the family and the relationships and try and tell the truth of her. And, and maybe that is the point is that Katia is every mother and every wife. Um, it is a universal um, character and story and is completely relatable. And um, and maybe that, maybe that's that's what it is. I, I um, 
I found it interesting uh, when we worked on the play um, to have to see the different attitudes of the different characters about how to deal with war. And Sasha's, you know, wanted to, to be there as the soldier and Katia as the mother um, and a woman had a very different response to how to manage it and how to survive. Um, and I found that quite an interesting thing to consider. I think that everybody within the situation will have different responses and different needs and desires on how to, to get through it and survive. Yes, I agree with that. The piece was written in sort of 2014, 2015, and uh, Katya has, along with Sasha, uh, she remembers the Soviet Union as was. Um, and even talks about his Soviet medals and things in the in the piece. Um, and there's a generation gap, isn't there, with the with with the, uh, the part of Oksana, um, the daughter who who is not so familiar with that old country that n no longer is, and who looks at things slightly differently. I wonder, Issy, if you want to come in and give us how you found that. Um, yeah, it was interesting because Oksana is kind of more in denial about the evolution of the situation. Um, yeah, I think, I think Kat, like we spoke early on in rehearsals about the fact that Katya kind of really was the hero of the play and finding, you know, finding it heroic that she kind of, her main concern was her family and looking out for their future and kind of how brave she is to be considering fleeing her home and the only home that she's ever known. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's brilliant, thank you. Uh, there are some touching moments between the mother and the daughter, but there's also another play in our double bill where Kristen, who's also with us today, plays a woman who's detached herself from her family. I mean, Kristen, you're in a, in a one person show where your family were very important to you and now, it's cats. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, it's, um, she stays behind. She's a very, she's an ordinary woman uh, living in the Donbass. She stays behind because her cat has, um, is producing kittens. And she suddenly realizes she can't just abandon them, uh, which is what she wants to do. And so she sends her husband and daughter away her son is already elsewhere and she starts she is a convinced nationalist uh in any case and has been since she was a student and um her neighbor is implacably opposed to that she favors the well she looks towards russia and she betrays her to the militia who um, very nearly kill her. And this is based on a, a, on a true story. Um, I would actually just like to say one thing, and that is I would like to pay tribute to John because I, you are responsible for this, John Friedman. You know, right from when I first was in touch with you, which is, 18 months ago or something, you know, January of 2020, uh, when we were doing, wanted to do uh, Andre's play at the cockpit. And then your extraordinary energy to have just galvanized everybody across the globe to, to put on readings and, you know, in this case, put on plays. I, I think it's just incredible um remarkable and i i feel i suppose just to say one more thing about i i feel this is a very very deep honor to do this play um i i it's an honor for a, a lot of reasons but one of them is the fact that the ukrainians have who have come who wait for me afterwards um it's as though this play gives them a voice and some of them haven't been here very long and many of them are in tears. And I, yeah, so I, that is what I feel. I have a, 
an absolute passion for it. And, uh, uh, and I want as many people to hear this um, or see this play as is humanly possible. Um, yeah. And I don't believe, like John, this is not the end. I think this is the beginning. Yeah. Yes, I think it's worth mentioning that we've worked with the Ukrainian Centre and Institute and so yeah. forth and made those links with the community as much as we could. Yeah. Um, our video designer is Ukrainian. He has been sending in his videos without being able to come here. We've had an actress helping us. So I think we've tried our best to do what we can in our space. But really, I suppose it wouldn't have been possible without the European Cultural Foundation, which is an EU funding stream that we managed to put these plays on, nor in fact, the Fimbra Theatre kind of being responsive and agile and quick about putting it on. Um, but I did want to just ask Margaret Cox, who has produced uh, this as well, yes. to just give us a closing couple of remarks on how it's been, why have you done it, and where do we think we can go with it? Well, I was very, I mean, I was in uh, Kiev this time, well, not just this time, I'm, I'm in Budapest right now, which is 13 hours drive from Kiev. Um, I was in Kiev last year. I had a wonderful, I was on a terrible job, but I had a wonderful time with new Ukrainian uh, film people. And I had no idea, uh, I had a Russian connection, but I had no idea what was gonna happen. Um, rather like John, it was that when it happened, I was just, when 24th of February happened, I was in a kind of shock and needing to, to respond in some way. It's taken me a while, uh, John, to be <laughs> responsive. <laughs> um, but uh, this, the whole part, this part of the world is very close to me. And um, I think America, like its geopolitical reaction is a little bit behind uh, on what should be done. No offense, John. So, I mean, I think that if we could uh, kind of connect with the intellectual communities in the States, uh, that would be an ideal for the play that we go on a university roadshow um, and try and wake up some student presence lefties in the states to uh, to engage with you know who, you know you know who that would be um, that would be a, a great thing but that's quite a pipe dream and I realize uh, we have to deal with what's going on now as best we can so. Uh, yeah, I think as a as a final point, then, John, um, since we are all in the same uh, boat trying to do our bit, uh, can you just uh, reflect on what you think anybody watching this can also do? There's all kinds of things that can be done. First of all, if you have some extra money, you can you can donate to all kinds of organizations. Uh, one mm -hmm. of the things that all of our readings, every one of our readings, uh, has a donation element to it. So mm -hmm. we have we have collected. I, I don't know exactly how much, but something like over two hundred thousand uh, mm -hmm. dollars. Um, uh, money is a, is a, is of enormous help. <laughs> um, uh, as 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 others have spoken, donate your time. Uh, help get somebody out. We have a Ukrainian family. It's our, our our relatives. We brought them here. My wife went to Poland, met them at the border, and brought them down to Greece. Uh, we're supporting them, and in fact, um, the the grandmother in the in the family is helping me translate from Ukrainian the plays because my 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 language is Russian. Uh, mm -hmm. I can I can read some Ukrainian. I can do okay, but not well mm -hmm. enough to be a good translator. So uh, Natasha Boratos, uh, uh, my distant relative uh, from Ukraine is here and she helps me do that. So um, uh, reach out, ask, there's all, kinds of, there's all kinds of places that help is needed. Uh, they can be found easily on the internet. They can be found through the database on our uh, project, the, the Ukrainian Worldwide uh, uh, Play Readings. Um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a situation this has been said so many times, it, but the fact of the matter is it's true. So let me just say it again. And that is that what this fight that's going on in Ukraine right now touches every single one of us who lives in a free country. And, and, and 
Thank you, John. Yeah. It's it it is it is our fight that we have not been fighting. We in the United States gave up to Trump. Um, uh, we have not. The United States has not been fighting this fight, and it is it's it's horrible. It is it is uh, inspiring. It is everything that it could possibly be for me to sit and watch what the Ukrainians are doing, standing up to uh, the evil that is coming down upon them. And I want to echo one thing that, that Kristen said, and, and this is probably for me is the most important thing, is that I consider it an honor that I have been able to help. If I've been able to help somebody, to me it is my it is an honor to to be able to do that. I am grateful that this thing fell into my lap, and I uh, it, it's uh, it, if anybody's thinking about oh you know I don't have time I don't. It, yeah, well, I spend 14 hours a day at this thing sometimes. I don't have time either. But you know, the more, the more time you spend, the greater it is. Yeah. The more wonderful it is, the better you feel. <laughs> and and yeah. so, you know, if you have any ideas, follow them. Yeah, chase them. Yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Our cast must now go and uh, prepare for the performances that are happening tonight and until Saturday evening this week, which is when the show's closed. So for anybody watching this discussion, thank you for watching. For our speakers, thank you very much for joining us and being so honest and open about the experiences. And we also just want to say Thank you uh, to our playwrights, of course, Natalia Vorosbit and Neda Nezdana, and say that Nick Hearn have published their play text. So for people watching this discussion who haven't had an opportunity to see the shows at the Fimbra, you can, in fact, of course, buy the book and read the plays instead. Thank you very much indeed, everybody.